Papua New Guinea is poised to exploit a huge reserve of natural gas. US giant ExxonMobil is the major operator of the Papua New Guinea Liquefied Natural Gas Consortium. Over $19 billion has been invested in this gigantic project comprising extraction of gas, onshore and offshore transportation and liquefaction of gas in the Port Moresby LNG plant. GDP of the country will double with an annual delivery of nearly 7 million tons of liquefied gas to end customers. However, the gas field is located in the heart of PNG, far from the coast, smack in the middle of 2,800 meter highlands named the Hydes. Gas has to be transported along a 300 kilometer pipeline to the LNG plant in the Gulf of Papua, and this through a region plagued by extreme topographic, geological and climatic conditions. The route traverses the heart of the highest mountain range in Oceania. Spikapag accepted the challenge of laying the pipeline. If we were to search for the end of the world, we'd find it here in Papua New Guinea. Don't look for roads, there are none, excepting a track built by Spi Kapag as a preliminary pipeline was laid in the 1990s. PNG, just north of Australia, counts 6 million inhabitants. More than 800 languages and dialects are spoken. Ancient traditions are still very present. Here it rains all year round, up to nine meters of water annually. The rainy season lasts five months. 30 centimeters of rain can fall some days. One to two meters of rain can fall in a month. Local temperatures reach 30 to 40 degrees Celsius inland. Humidity is present everywhere on the island. Here, between marshes and mountains, through regions devoid of any infrastructure, Spikapag, subsidiary of Entrepôt's Group Vinci, must demonstrate its expertise and know-how as it undertakes such an extremely complex project. But beyond the engineering challenge, this project is all about respecting a balance between economic growth, social development and protection of the local environment, today and for future generations. In total, some 450 kilometers of mostly 32-inch diameter pipeline are to be laid. The PNG LNG Consortium is committed to sustainable development an environmental and social compliance charter involving all stakeholders has been established. Local environment and social practices of locals will be preserved. Safety and health of the project workforce is also a priority. Work began in late 2010, one year after the contract was signed, and first phases of engineering, procurement of materials, mobilization, and delivery of on-site equipment achieved. The project management team is based in Brisbane, Australia. An office based in Port Moresby, capital of Papua New Guinea, manages all administrative aspects, as well as purchase planning and logistics. For this project, SPI Kapag mobilized more than 3,000 employees, including 600 expatriates from 35 different nationalities. 2,400 Papuan workers were recruited, of them nearly 1,900 from villages along the pipeline route. The choice of construction equipment is very important. From Dunkirk, France, 12 cargo ships are chartered. The sheer quantity of materials is breathtaking. 200 earth movers, 260 all-terrain 4x4 vehicles, 50 side booms, over a thousand camp units, over a hundred generators, 100 hydraulic excavators, 
45 bulldozers, 50 dump trucks, 70 four-wheel drive buses to transport personnel, 20 cranes, 15 directional drills. All this equipment is shipped over 24,000 miles to the southern hemisphere and port of call, Port Moresby. Here, everything is loaded onto landing craft. But shipment is not over. A 400-kilometer, one-week-long upstream route along the Kikori River awaits. Finally, the cargo arrives at Kopi, a small village transformed into freight platform. Kopi will be the sole entry point of the project. A bird's eye view of the route, a never-ending virgin forest gives an idea of the scope of the project. Personnel are transported by helicopter to the different settlements. Work rotations are mostly guided by weather conditions. Here, nature decides. To lodge all 3,000 employees working on the 300-kilometer stretch pipeline laying route, Speed Capag has designed mobile living spaces or camps that can accommodate up to 1,500 people each and be moved as the project unfolds. A total of eight camps are thus assembled and disassembled every 40 kilometers. At least three of them are operational at any one time. The cargo ship Kikori Chief transports fuel, supplies and food between Port Moresby and Kopi. Every week some 32 containers of supplies, in addition to 400 cubic meters of fuel and nine refrigerated containers of food, are needed. From the coast, the first 120 kilometers of pipeline are laid in a plain called Lowlands. This flat area is often flooded after five months of monsoons, making it a wild marshland requiring a 12-kilometer stretch of backfill to allow for an access route. For vehicles to cross the river, floating bridges must be set up. The population is sparse along this section of the route here in an area of lush vegetation where the sea merges with the land. The next stage of the project runs through a 50 kilometer long plateau. Separating sea and mountains, this stretch is a prelude to what lies ahead. But work continues unabated as employees carry out pipe bending and welding. The backbone of Papua New Guinea lies straight ahead. To get there, you have to traverse 150 kilometers of mountains, ranging from heights of 600 to 2,800 meters. The terrain is very rugged. Moreover, an 8-inch condensate canalization must be laid in parallel with the main 32-inch pipeline along 100 kilometers. Much of this terrain consists of very hard rock, this requires blasting operations. The pipeline is laid along a route that dips and then rises steeply, sometimes reaching 39 degree slopes. This calls for specialized equipment, such as skyline cranes and spider excavators. Oh, no. 
Speed Kappa capitalized on a project of this magnitude to set up a working conditions management and community development support plan for local populations affected by the pipeline. Leaders of the community were informed as works progressed to avoid conflicts that could slow down works. Speed Capag ensured recruitment and training in line with the roadmap and recommendations drawn up by Exxon Mobil. A skilled and productive workforce capable of working collaboratively, showing mutual respect and upholding the ethical standards fixed by Exxon Mobil was built up. When we want to shake it away. I'm calling Mr. Tomo. With such a large and ethnically diverse workforce having to work in extreme conditions, occupational security was more than ever a major stake of the PNG LNG project. 28 million working hours were carried out with a frequency rate of less than 0.072, a total recordable injury frequency rate of less than 0.25, a gravity rate under 0.01. Thank you. Supervisors, uh, These outstanding indicators confirm that foremen and managers at all levels were well drilled in safety procedures. The project was completed with 15 million working hours registered without work loss due to accidents. After four years of intense work, the construction phase is over. A new economic era in Papua New Guinea begins gas reaches the Port Moresby liquefaction plant. In May 2014, the first client LNG tanker embarks, five months ahead of schedule. Residual impacts of the project are dealt with. The local environment is restored. Part of the local population are employed to work in permanent installations. Others, having become qualified workers through the PNG LNG project, now work on other oil delivery infrastructures in the country. Execution of this project was, for Speed Ag, a major challenge given the inherent risk factors and having been chosen by ExxonMobil. The men and women of Speed Ag have once again shared their know-how and passion for a job well done. Together, they contributed to implementing the project and to the development of a nation. Speed Capag, over 50,000 kilometers of pipeline laid in more than 50 countries and on five continents. Tell us where you want to go. We've probably been there already. We can share our experience.